good evening all welcome to this new session that is radiology premier league so we will try to discuss cases and spotters in this series uh, as the ipl fever is going on i wanted to keep a catchy word so i have framed it as radiology premier league so in the coming series we will try to see cases and spotters which are both uh, useful in the theory and more more so in the practicals so coming to the first case here you can see there is diffuse sclerosis of the skull vault there is bulging fontanelle and even there is diffuse sclerosis of the visualized bones even sclerosis of the medullary cavity which is giving the classical bone in bone appearance even there are growth arrest lines here also you can see there are growth arrest lines and even there is typical widening of the metaphyses with remodeling uh, mimicking the erlenmeyer flash deformity so this is the classical erlenmeyer flash with deformity with growth arrest lines and even there is acute angle of the mandible with bone in bone appearance so this is a case of osteopetrosis next coming to a similar case which is a counterpart and most commonly kept as a differential diagnosis here also you can see there is a sclerosis of the skull vault this is a sclerosis of the skull vault and there are patent patent fontanelle and patent sutures and here you can see there is acroosteolysis and even there is sclerosis of the bones but there is no sclerosis of the medullary cavity or bone in bone appearance this is a case of pic nodosis so coming to the differentials between the osteopetros and pic nodistosis here we have already seen that is the bone in bone appearance or sandwich vertebra are commonly seen in osteopetrosis but not seen in pic nodistosis mandibular angle will be acute in osteopetrosis whereas obtuse in pic nodistosis here you can see this is the obtuse angle in pic nodistosis next uh, even uh, there is acroosteolysis is commonly seen in uh, pic nodistosis which is not seen in osteopetrosis and even uh, multiple fractures and complications are common in osteopetrosis which is not seen in pic nodistosis pause the slide and see all the differences between osteopetrosis and pic nodistosis coming to the next case here you can see there are the seminal vesicles in the seminal vesicles there are multiple lucent defects with eccentric rim calcification and there is bladder wall calcification so whenever you see bladder wall calcification this is also other ct case where you can see bladder wall calcification so whenever you see bladder wall calcification with multiple seminal vessel calcifications and even lucent defects definitely suspect cystosomiasis so what is the diagnosis the entity this is cystosomiasis and other common causes of these imaging features that is bladder wall calcification are here you can see the uh, these are the multiple lucent defects are nothing but the x deposited in the seminal vesicles and this is the bladder wall calcification so bladder wall calcification can be seen in cystosomiasis but other conditions where the bladder wall calcifications can be seen can be remembered by mnemonic that is tricks so t for tuberculosis t for transitional cell carcinoma r for radiation or radi radiotherapy or radiation induced cystitis i for interstitial cystitis c is cytotoxic that is radiation and chemotherapy induced cystitis and s is cystosomiasis so most these are the common mnemonic that is tricks you can remember for bladder wall calcification so remember whenever there is seminal vesicles multiple lucent defects with calcifications and bladder wall calcification definitely suspect cystosomiasis next uh, this is the other case where you can see there are multiple subependymal nodules here you can see there are multiple subependymal nodules and there are radial white matter bands these are the radial white matter bands and even there are cortical tubers these are the cortical tubers so and these are the enhancing subependymal nodules so what is the diagnosis this is a case of tubular sclerosis and what are the other uh, you can see this is the diagnosis tubular sclerosis and which of the following is not usually associated with tubular sclerosis because renal angioma lipomas lymphangial hematosis and cardiac rhabdomyomyosis are commonly seen in tubular sclerosis whereas adrenal pheochromocytomas are less likely seen in tubular sclerosis next case uh, what is the entity here you can see this is the lens in the normal position in the right orbit but here you can see the lens is completely dis dislocated posteriorly so what is the diagnosis this is called uh, posterior dislocation of the lens or ectopia lentis so this is commonly seen in all of the following except because it's seen in marfan syndrome it is seen in ehlers-danlos syndrome and it is seen in hemocystinuria but it is not seen in ellis van creveld syndrome so the answer is ellis van creveld syndrome next what is this uh, device so this is nothing but what is the name of the device this is thermoluminescent luminescence dosimeter that is tld batch which we wear regularly in our departments during all the radiological procedures so name the lab th that you send after the term usage to record the findings this is the common question asked in viva so we our state is telangana so we send it to aventec lab private limited chennai so you have to remember that 
these are the states and this is the lab where they sent so andhra pradesh telangana tamil nadu karnataka and kerala puducherry andaman nicobar lakshadweep they sent to aventec lab chennai maharashtra gujarat rajasthan goa dadra nagar haveli western region they sent to renentech lab maharashtra all the other central northern northeastern parts of country they sent to ultratech lab chatisgarh all the defense industry institutions of country they sent to defense laboratory jodhpur so these you remember these is the lab and this is the thermoluminescent dosimeter it may be asked in viva next what is the uh, diagnosis here you can see easily you can see this is the crescent sign where there is a meniscus of air surrounding the uh, soft tissue density lesion here this is the class sign and this is the cold spring sign so by this time you know this is the case of these are the case of interception so what is the diagnosis this is interception and what are the common imaging signs are nothing but crescent sign as we have seen this is the crescent sign this is the class sign this is the coil spring appearance this is nothing but the protruding mass or interceptum with mucosal edema gives this typical filling defect with uh, coil spring appearance so crescent sign class sign and even coil spring appearance or coil spring sign so what is the other common appearance on ultrasound this is the bowl in bowl appearance or target appearance or donut sign so target appearance or donut sign here you can see this is the intussusceptum this is the intussusceptions and uh, these are the lymph nodes which are the uh, so uh, cause which may be uh, one of the cause for intussusception so this is a case of intussusception next case what is this classical appearance it is called this is called as breast in breast appearance this is the breast in breast appearance so what is the appearance this is called breast in breast appearance what is the diagnosis this is breast hamartoma and conditions associated with multiple hamartomas is cowden syndrome so this may be asked in viva so what is this uh, procedure what is this uh, interventional procedure this is nothing but called bronchial artery embolization and next common question which may be asked is which embolic agents are commonly used for this procedure nothing but polyvinyl alcohol particles which are non absorbable embolic agents 350 to 500 micrometer in diameter and most frequently used worldwide in bronchial artery embolization next what is the classical sign or appearance this is classical appearance is called birpa sign or birpa sign or appearance it is seen in xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis next uh, we will try to see the pcp entity forms and uh, one matching question on based on the pcp entity forms so pause the slide and see the forms and match them to the correct answers so the answer is a4 c3 f2 and g1 so we will try to see what are the forms which we regularly fill and we will try to see one mnemonic which we can easily remember so form a that is form of application for registration or renewal form b is nothing but original or duplicate certificate for display form c form for rejection of application or grant or renewal form d is for maintenance records by genetic counseling center form e is maintenance of records by genetic laboratory form f is the regular form which we fill before before doing an ultrasound form g is nothing but for consent for all the interventional procedures that is pre implantation amniotic amniotic fluid culture biopsy or cv uh, coronary villus sampling form h is for maintenance of permanent record of applications so easiest mnemonic for remember these forms in pcp entity which may be useful in theory or else in uh, practicals also form a is for application b is for displaying the board so b for board c is for remember c for cancel or rejection d remember genetic counseling center so that is dcc so d remember for genetic counseling center e is nothing but remember for genetic laboratory so gel so commonly we use ultrasound gel so remember gel so g the form e is nothing but uh, to should be maintained by genetic laboratory form f is filled filled routinely routinely by us form g is guided procedures consent so g for guided h is hamesha so permanent record of applications so this is the easiest mnemonic for you to remember thank you all